Hello everyone and welcome back to my JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. In this episode we're going to rescue two Kerbals who are stranded around the moon and we are going to land one of them on the surface of the moon, hopefully. And, uh, well, this might not be the best configuration for that, we'll see, because we're gonna have to lug this stage around, uh, otherwise we won't have enough Delta V to do both the rescues. And this is still the, the Centaurish stage. We have the cryogenic engines and the hydrogen and oxygen. And I've changed these to be high quality engines to get the right burn time. Otherwise, uh, they can't sustain the nearly nine minute burn time we have there. Uh, so yeah, we will hope it works out better this time than last time. It better. Uh, we are of course not launching this with crew on board because we need all the space for the Kerbals that we rescue. And um, we are sporting a different arrangement here. I've replaced two of the SRBs on this launch vehicle with liquid fuel boosters with Merlin engines. And hopefully that'll work out better for us. We've boosted our Delta V a bit. Um, if we take a look at the sea level thrust weight ratio, well, we'll have to move these up here to get the right number. Um, it's 1.48, so that's satisfactory, but I want to move those back down so that if we have a failure, we know about it ahead of time. Uh, not the launch clamps. Okay, and uh, these are all standard engines, so there is a possibility of a failure. And to deal with that, I made sure that um, we have the boosters at least on action group. The main engines, if one fails, the other should be able to continue. But if a booster fails, that probably throws us off a little bit. And so we would want to shut down the engine. So I have toggle engine there, and then we'll separate off the booster and boosters, and yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, so only six SRBs this time. We do not want any Kerbals on board initially. And let's go see if we can rescue some Kerbals. Okay, uh, here we are. I had a strange problem where I wasn't reading my throttles, so I reassigned it to my normal throttle, which will hopefully save some other problems. But anyway, hopefully everything else is working properly. We'll see. And with that, ignition. And launch. Okay, lots of engines going on. Sort of expensive. Okay, looking good. Getting ready for booster separation. Are they done? Okay, there we go. Booster set. These are the SRBs. This has become sort of an Ariane thing where you have a mix of solid boosters and liquid boosters. The Ariane 4 style, or before Ariane 5. Okay, Merlin boosters go off a little bit tight, but I didn't see any good Separatrons to use. I don't know if I've unlocked them yet. Or maybe I just didn't spot them. I don't know if I've used them before or not. Okay, nearly in orbit, which is good, because the cryogenic stage, you know, doesn't have the greatest thrust weight ratio. All right, separation and ignition. Standard explosion. They're both on. They both read 23 minutes maximum burn time and we're expecting nine minutes, assuming we don't throttle down. Okay, and... We've lost signal. No, come on! Oh, shoot. I forgot to extend the antennae. It doesn't look like we're gonna be able to stop in time. It's not going anywhere in particular, though. One engine failed. We'll call it an engine test. Now we get communication. Well, it's too late now. Let's forget all about this and launch it properly now. Okay, here we go again. Throttle up. SAS on. Ignition. And stop. <laughs> and engine exploded. Uh, I saw that. Okay. Let's recover. Okay. Uh, let's try that again. Third time's the charm, right? 
Uh, okay, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. I don't like the flex, but alright. Sort of releases pressure once we release the clamps. At least it's a nice thing to launch. Very exciting. Okay, very smooth so far. Keeping right in line with that prograde vector. Okay, booster set. Now we've lost one engine on on the core, I think. Yeah, that's fine at this point, I think. We'll keep pitching up a little bit more, probably, is for the best. We could enable crossfeed to the boosters, I suppose, I don't know. But we'll do it legit. Hold it? I think it can. And if it can hold it now, it'll hold it even better as we go along. Uh, the problem is whether we go beyond its burn time, or whether it fails short of that, of course. Um, let's see. It's got... We've got more fuel here than it can burn. Let's just make sure that it continues to pitch up and we'll use as much as we can. Thrust weight ratio on the Centaur stage is only 0.44. This right now is 0.81. Well, that's why it needs all the boosters, after all. Uh, it'd be 1.6 with the other engine, but still not great at this late point in the stage. No. 19 seconds according to that remaining burn. Still, I, I think that they've misread what rated burn time means, but uh, we'll see what it does. It did not automatically shut down at that point. Okay, well then that's that makes me happier. Maybe we'll be all right after all. I have extended the antennae. <laughs> I almost forgot again with all the excitement. Let's check our link. Mm, we're still communicating straight back. I don't know if we can communicate up to... Uh, you know what? That's gonna be a trouble. That's probably, uh, that one's probably a little bit too high. This one, closer. That one is more like what we need. The burn of this is just too long. Uh, oh wait, we've got, uh, Quadsat D. Where is Quadsat D? That's B. Oh, uh, D is over here. That's not great. We're gonna have a horizon issue with it eventually. It doesn't even show the line back to it. Well, let's see. It's gonna be tight. Uh, please don't lose calm. Please don't lose calm. And shut down. Okay, we are in orbit. That is tight. Okay. Well, we have 2,650, which means we have uh, 1,500 to get there, a little bit to make orbit, and then maybe uh, 800 and 900 to rendezvous. Just to couple off that little thing. Okay, so we need to get to Pat Berry's pod here, and I think we already did Urcus, right? Um, uh, that's the only other scrap I see here, so I think we haven't. Let me take a look here. Okay, we haven't done Urcus yet. So, the problem is Patbury's pod, which is all the way out there. Okay, we'll capture Luce initially, and then 
match relative speeds at that node. That's the plan anyway. Okay, we're one minute from the maneuver. Let's see about our communications. Um, that one might be a little bit high. Let's see. No, it's 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 still in range. Quad sat D again. Okay, I think it'll be fine through the maneuver. We're pretty close to this Darud helipad. So maybe that'll be good too. All right. And ignition. Okay, and well, we're a little bit off apparently. Okay, let's see what that means in practical terms. Obviously, our other plots may be in jeopardy. Um, that's our current path, right? Not our plotted path, so that should be okay. Yep, that's that's the one. Okay. All right, looks like we're good there. We are in a reasonable position to recharge. We have to use the tiny little panels on the pod there, but that seemed to be sufficient. Oh, liquid hydrogen has boil off. No. That is way quick boil off. Oh, shucks. Oh, the boil off rate is really, really, really high. Um, okay, uh, let's see if we can reduce that. Um, we have to be sun down if we want to get something on our solar panels here. It reduces it, but not nearly enough, I don't think. Oh, no, it's still going down. I uh, already let quite a lot boil off, though. That's going to hurt our chances to do things. Oh, okay, it's going nearly to zero. I should have done that earlier, I suppose. We are still recharging. It's still boiling off, though. Pointed directly at the sun. That's the best we can do. 0.4 per hour. Well, it better be. Uh, I think it increases during certain time warp, though. I mean... Uh, maybe not. See, it's sort of fluctuating. Well, yeah, it's doing some fuzzy math here. Look at that. When I go past a certain time warp, uh, this is the best time warp I can do without it doing bad math. It would seem. Oh, it's still doing bad math. Okay. Um, we've lost a lot. We'll have to take a look at lower boil-off tanks and everything. But yeah, it goes crazy on the boil-off if I time more faster than this, so that's not good. Because this isn't a high enough time warp. <laughs> We're going to be in... We, we can't take this long. Oh, the, it's gone up again. Wait. No? Gosh darn it, it just... Yeah, it went up to 15 per hour randomly, even though it's not supposed to. I think I should just turn this off, because it's just not going to be able to do the calculations right. I think it's already taken more than I wanted it to. Let me just see, is that an option? Blue dog? Uh, oh, it doesn't let me uh, change it now. Also... I wonder if two different things... Let me just turn SSTU's boil off off. It's possible that that's conflicting with it. I don't know. Let's see. No, it's still got math issues. 
Yeah, um, so let's just verify that it is taking more than it ought to. So this is 100 times. Next step is 500 times. So it should take uh, 1.5 per second or so. It's doing much more than that. It's doing much more than 1.5 per second. Okay, but it doesn't let me uh, turn it off here. Mm, let me see if I can go to the Space Center and turn it off. Blue Dog, turn it off please. Or, well, I'll, I'll just turn it off because uh, even if I change the boil off rate, it's not going to affect the fact that apparently it's doing the math wrong during high time warp, so we'll leave it be for now. If you guys have a suggestion for a fix for that, I'll be glad to deal with boil off. It just can't be that that way. We need to be able to time warp and have the boil off be calculated properly. Also, I do think the boil off rate is a little bit high for in space. Boil off is pretty high on the ground, but um, in space, well, I mean, it does sort of depend on your orientation, but that was pretty strong dependency, yeah. They do insulate. Well, maybe it's because we just don't have insulation in these tanks. We'll have to take a look at our tanks to see. Okay, but technically not a problem we need to deal with right now. We've already lost quite a lot, though. I mean, not only do we have to do these rendezvous, but we have to be able to bring our Kerbals back. I knew there was a reason I didn't like cryogenics, and I held off until now. Oh well. We have another mission that's using this cryogenic stage, and we'll check the tanks to see what we can do to turn the, the boil off back on. Well, we had an engine malfunction. Okay. Okay, well, plan B then. Um, I don't know if we can even do plan B actually right now. We'll try and bring back the one Kerbal in this high orbit, but I don't know if that's possible. No, oh, why do we have needs at? Wait, 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 wait. We're supposed to be at Pat Berry's pod. Oh God, we're doing the wrong thing. Uh, go retrograde, just retrograde. Oh, great. We had another engine malfunction. One of the one kilonewton thrusters. Okay, lots of trouble. The ones on the lander are high quality. That's a fine orientation for now. Well, that's pretty close. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's worse. So, prograde. And we'll have to fix that from the other side. As far as getting back, we're actually going to need to use this RCS to help us out transferring back to Kerbin. Uh, this is an okay orientation for sunlight. Okay, let's not push this too far. Okay. As it is, I don't even know if we can have enough Delta V to get back. We have found Patberry. Oh, we'd better have at least 100 meters per second in the monopropellant. Possibly we need more. Okay, and we will stop. Maybe we should use RCS. Because it's less efficient anyway. Okay. Pat Berry is a scientist. Okay, Pat Berry. Um, you want to be on the top side of that pod. And board. Okay, Patbury is in, and Patbury is just, there's a dedicated rescue mission now, and we need to, let me see which way around are we going again? That way. Okay, so it's over here. 
Well, we'll fine tune it during the burn, but that's 290. We've got 305. And we've got the mod propellant as well. Okay, node. And we're actually going to start with the RCS. All right, ignition. And we'll actually finish with the RCS as well. Okay, I don't really care about the plot per se. I just want the periapsis right. Okay, that'll do. Okay, we have actually some of our mob propellant left and 100 meters per second to spare. Well, this part works. I mean, well, one engine off, but works well enough. Go tail to the sun again, and let's get Patbury back home at least. Okay, here we go, coming in. More radiation. And check that we have supplies in here. We do. Alright. Service module separation. Antenna retraction, just so they're not poking out. And surface negative. We might as well rotate so we still get some sunlight, maybe. Service module explosions, bit of heating at the bottom of this. We are we are in plasma blackout now. Okay, reaching G limit doesn't look too bad. Okay, we have parachute pre-deployment. And full parachute deployments. Well, it sort of has a weird outline to it. Well, uh, yeah. To the. Oh, I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, uh, can we recover now? It's splashing a whole lot. Okay. Well, Pat Berry's back. At level 1, got some ribbons, we fulfilled that contract. Okay, well now we have to send another one of those. Let's take a look at our tanks. We need cryogenic tanks, I guess. I mean, technically it is a cryogenic tank because it said so, right? I mean, we changed the part type to cryogenic. Is there a special cryogenic? I don't... I mean, it's this one. That's that's all we got there. Let me just type in cryogenic and see. Well, that's a cryogenic fuel tank. And then there's the SSTU whole business. But these are huge, aren't they? Pretty sure they are huge. Oh, well, let's see. Yeah. And then there's this one. Uh, it says Half Life 8 Hours. I don't know. Let me let me ponder this situation. That's the worst spoil off though, but still. Uh do we know what the half life on these tanks is? Does it say? It says the same thing, doesn't it? on the Bossert ones. I mean, this is a Bossert BT. Uh, it's this one. It still says 8.3% and Half-Life 8 hours. But we, we lost a lot very quickly last time. So it seemed to be more than the maximum boil-off rate at higher time warp. I'll have to review the video to check. Maybe we should just switch back to the old stage instead of using a cryogenic stage for now. Let me think about it. Okay, so I've gone with the Decker stage again, so no more cryogenics. And we've got an extra tank on it. We'll see how that works out, whether uh, that's a good idea or not. I also made them high quality engines because with the extra tank we're gonna hit their burn time limit. So we should probably do that. Otherwise, of course, we have ladder rungs. 
I removed the center engine, the big engine on the lander. Instead, we've got an additional tank, this Bell liquid fuel tank, because I wasn't satisfied with the Delta V margins that we were getting. And we also have an, uh, an extra pair of ant engines, so we have six now. So all of that business. But yep, we just got to send the lander over and then send the pod to rescue the Kerbal in low orbit around the moon. So, ignition and launch. Oh, so the SRBs are gonna last for less time, I think. Or maybe that was just with the other pod, I forget. Uh, one of them has a higher thrust limiting now. Okay, well that seems like the boosters were tuned to a higher thrust limit. And separation. This is a very satisfying rocket to launch, to be honest. I have to remember that this isn't uh, with FAR, so we've got more drag than we normally would have. I'll have to keep the pitch a little bit higher now. Okay, booster set. Obviously, the upper stage is heavier now, so the lower stages had more work to do. Will it be worth it? We will see. I mean, these guys have a specific impulse of 316, which is not far off. I mean, the Decker, I think, has less, actually. So, depends on your point of view. Well, not really. I should have worked out the math ahead of time. Now uh, we have one engine malfunction. At this point, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, next stage. We really should bring the quad sats to a lower orbit so that we don't have this problem. I wonder if we have enough fuel in them though. We do have communication right now at least, but I don't know for how long. Okay, uh, 113 by 91. And we'll pass on that thought for the time being. I just want to focus on getting this over to the moon. Well, that's pretty darn close right there. Um, hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, we'll deal with the details after we do the main burn. How are we going to have... Com oh, we should just go back to the map. Are we going to have communication there? Um, uh, maybe... I mean, we're communicating through Needsat 2A right now. Uh, right. Yeah, so it's still gonna be there once we get to that maneuver. Ignition. Okay, well, hopefully the additional reliability allows me to throttle down safely. Oh, there we go. Alright. We may need to use an extra ignition, but why don't we do a mid-course adjustment then? It doesn't seem like a whole big deal here. There's no mod propellant. Oh, gosh darn it. Well, at least we stopped it here. Yeah, okay. Forget all this. There's no mod propellant. Wait, 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 wait. But the Kerbal's gonna have mod propellant, and this time we can have the Kerbal make sure that the Kerbal brings it into the pod instead of, like, dumping it into this stage. Last time what happened was uh, the, the mod propellant got dumped into this stage and got separated off, which made no sense to me. Uh, this time we have to remember to keep the mop propellant in here. Oh boy. Okay, uh, we're still a go. <laughs> we're still a go. That should be pretty good for a start. Okay. Let's make sure we get recharged. We have plenty of ignitions and such. Uh, this is going to be touchy though. Okay. 
We're not looking for a rendezvous right now. So that's a little bit further away. We need to send the other pod over. I mean, I guess we don't. Well, we need to send the other pod over just to make sure that when we do activate the Kerbal, we have the ability to bring the Kerbal back. Uh, the Kerbal can get directly in here, that's for sure. Okay. Retro. Hey, this Jeb on the moon, the flag, right there. Well, we better not revisit that this time. That would not be right. We want new science. We've got sciencey things on here. Not enough sciencey things, but some. And ignition. And that's fine for now. Um, we can keep it loose on that side so we can rendezvous with the target pod Urcus's scrap later on. Really low orbit, 9.9 .9 kilometers. I hope that's safe. Anyway, let's send the pod over. Okay, here we go. Same deal as with the previous launch in terms of extending the upper stage here. Mm, I forget if I tuned up the throttle on the boosters, we'll see. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition, and launch. The booster wiggle though. Mm. Well, they seem to be used up pretty fast. I guess so. Uh, I'm going too shallow. I'm neglecting the fact that uh, we have more drag here. Okay, booster set. Ooh, a little bit close there. Because we're separating them earlier than usual. Okay, booster set. Okay, just waiting till I can extend those antennae. Really eager to extend those now. Okay, extend. Alright, they are extended. And separation and ignition. Oh. oh no! We lost communication. Oh, we got communication. And I shut down. Alright, what are we communicating through? Need sat 2A, we really, really needed you. Um, jeez. Hmm, this is lopsided. That might actually make it worse. Uh, yeah, that's making it worse. Okay. Alright, well, we've used a lot of ignitions. I think I might have forgotten to set these to high quality. Yeah, they're low quality still. And we put the extra fuel on. That's not gonna help anything. Well, we'll see. Okay, we'll have that initial burn. That should still be... Uh, well, somewhere between Needsat 2A and Quadsat C we'll have communication. Okay, ignition. And... Okay, I probably shouldn't have gone with a thrall down, but we did. And let's see how our situation at the moment... Oh, we're crashing into it, that's good. Hmm, that's a heck of an inclination though. I think we should do a mod propellant correction midway. Okay. That will be a good approach right there. And we are recharging. Duna, you can tell by the little red dot there, very red Duna right now. 
Mod propellant sure seems to have a lot of delta V in it. <laughs> it's amazing. We got some extra site data here. 7.5 credits. More science has been trickling in as we have proceeded with our missions. Now oh, there's Jeb on the moon again. We know we were in the right place. Passing by it again. Okay, orbit retrograde. Ignition. We lost one engine. That's to be expected. We're going pretty high in their burn time, so... We're just hoping at this point. I think we'll certainly use the lander pod in order to rescue the Urcus. Okay, oh, um, the periapsis is a bit low. Okay, well I think that's been enough chaos for one episode. Um, so we've got the pieces in place for a uh, moon landing, but we need to actually rescue the Kerbal involved and then do the moon landing and bring the Kerbal back, and I'll do that in the next episode. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.